Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where we help you conquer the internet one video at a time. We cover everything from how to start a YouTube channel to how to make a video go viral. And now, here's your host, the one and only Dusty Porter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 320 of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where each and every week I interview a wonderful YouTube creator. And I talk with them about their journey. This week is super fun and informative. Uh, I'm joined today by a creator who has grown his YouTube channel from 5,000 to 350,000 subscribers in just over a month. He is also a super successful TikTok creator, understands short form vertical video better than anyone I've spoken with here on the podcast. And he's got so much value to add. I can't wait for you guys to hear his story today. Uh, but before we do that, would want to encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already. If you think you know someone or you would be a great fit for this podcast to have on the show to share your journey and your story on YouTube uh, to help you know give value to others as they listen to this, you can fill out the five-minute Google form in the show notes or you can just hit me up over on Twitter. It's at DustyPorterYT. Huge thank you to TubeBuddy, the sponsor of this show. It has been now for over 300 some odd episodes. It's the Swiss Army Knife of YouTube tools. And if you use our link in the show notes that says try TubeBuddy for free for a month here, you will get, as it says, a free 30-day trial of TubeBuddy and you will not regret it. It'll shave hours off of your YouTube workflow, not to mention once you get inundated in their systems, you'll be able to dive into things that will help you A-B test thumbnails, uh, bulk replace things in your descriptions, navigate YouTube much easier, and that's just a tip of the iceberg as to what TubeBuddy can do. We're also brought to you by the fine folks over at patreon.com slash Dusty Porter. Uh, if you support us at the analyst tier or higher, you will get shouted out on one episode per month. This week, we have Silas Swaim from T1E Adventures on YouTube. We have Joshua Griffin from the HVAC Guide for Homeowners on YouTube. And then we have Stephen Reich and William Foley. Thank you to our analyst this week. I really appreciate you guys. It means a lot to me that you would support the show. If you haven't already, I want to encourage you, wherever you are listening to this podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeart, it does not matter. Subscribe. It's free. There's no paywall. You get this every Friday, 6 a.m. in your feed, ready to go for the weekend to help you maybe make a light bulb go off, get a little bit of strategy or technique from the interviews and conversations. I have done over 310 interviews on this podcast. None of them are old. None of them have expired. You can go back in your free time if you have that time as you're walking, working, commuting, and listen to these interviews. Be encouraged, and I promise. It's one of those things to where I always feel better after I interview someone and I go back and listen to these shows, especially last week. We had 16-year-old. Uh, we had a 16-year-old creator on, and she was talking about what it means to be a female uh, minority creator. There's just so many positive things happening from this podcast. I cannot mention them all here, but before I get too much into the, the weeds here, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this week's conversation. I hope you guys enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's conversation on the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. Dusty here, as always, joined today by Austin Armstrong, who is a lifelong digital marketer, public speaker, host of the TikTok podcast, Business Talk, and CEO of Socialty Pro, an organic SEO and TikTok marketing agency. Austin has posted over 2,000 videos on TikTok, tripling his own business's revenue and thousands more across his clients' accounts. Austin has been able to leverage his success on TikTok to grow hundreds of thousands of followers across every social media platform, including YouTube, and we're going to talk about that today, and loves sharing the strategies that have worked for him to empower you to do the same. Austin, how are you today, my friend? Dusty, I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me on, brother. All right. So let's start from the beginning. Um, you decided to start a TikTok account. And can you can you tell me quickly? Just answer this quickly. Did TikTok come before YouTube, or did YouTube come before TikTok? How how did that happen? Yeah, YouTube came before TikTok. So I've been active on YouTube in various capacities for about the last eight years, mm -hmm. uh, working at other agencies. I've had several of my own channels. I had a, a hot sauce uh, and spicy food challenge channel. I had a ASMR channel for a little bit. Started this marketing channel. Uh, when I started my uh, my business, which was about three and a half years ago. Uh, so I've been doing YouTube long before TikTok years. I love that. And 
just let's go ahead and do what they call a tease in the radio business. Can you talk about kind of what you've recently done with your YouTube channel by repurposing your TikToks as shorts on the YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. This is kind of mind blowing and, and I still can't believe it's true, but uh, it took me about three years to get my channel from zero to 5,000 subscribers. And then in the last month, I went from 5,000 to now 335,000 subscribers. <laughs> All right. And so we'll definitely dive into that. Um, so I guess first and foremost, let's talk about what you do. So what type of content would people see if they came to your YouTube channel or your TikTok account um, and talk about kind of the origin story of how that started? Yeah. So my vision and goal of the channel is to empower business owners to learn all of the assets of digital marketing so that they can master it themselves and apply uh, that to their business. So everything from uh, every digital marketing strategy, I've been in this space for about 17 years. Uh, YouTube tips, SEO tips is really where I got started. Uh, TikTok strategies, LinkedIn strategies, but really what blew up my channel and, and helped me blow up online everywhere is showing useful websites for business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, and and sometimes a little even broader than that of people that are just interested in useful life hack websites. So it's a it's a collection of a lot of useful and helpful information, but really digital marketing focused. And TikTok plays perfectly to that, right? Because the short form content of just putting it out there and people can get a quick hit of, oh, that website would be so helpful or, oh, that tip is amazing. TikTok is fantastic for that. Yeah, I, I love it. It's it's actually been a little surprising because when I first got started on TikTok back in uh, 2019, October 2019, so almost three years now, um, and still the opinion of the platform is, oh, that's that dancing app for kids. But I think it's getting a little bit better. Um, there wasn't much digital marketing and educational content on the platform back then. It was still so early and it still kind of is, which is a, a huge opportunity for people. But yeah, I, I found that it's been a great um, outlet for me, not only just um, a creative outlet for me to get all of this stuff out of my head. It's been the easiest format of content for me to shoot consistently on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Um but funneling the content too from, we don't have to go too deep here, but uh, but a, a good marketing funnel that I like to uh, follow is at the top of the funnel, broad awareness oriented content to just bring in as many people into my ecosystem as, as possible. This is your viral potential oriented content and just basically content focused on anyone that's a, a business owner, an entrepreneur or an aspiring business owner, entrepreneur. And then we have the nurturing oriented content, which builds trust and likability um, and nurtures them down that journey. And then conversion oriented content as well. And you'd be surprised how well that you can do this on a platform like TikTok with with the right strategy. But it's changed my life, to be honest, Dusty. All right. So I want to dive deep into this um, because you're one of the first. I've had a few people who've been on TikTok before, but not someone who's had the success that you've had thus far. Um, let's talk about comparison, TikTok and YouTube. Uh, what do you, and, and then we're going to talk about cross-pollination of the two and how to kind of repurpose because we know this as content creators, when you can repurpose your podcast as video clips, you do it. When you can repurpose your blog post as video, you, you, you get the point, right? You're, you're going to do these things if you're a smart content creation and marketer, right? And you're trying to make money and it's more than just a hobby. So let's talk about the pros and cons of both. Let's start with TikTok and then go to YouTube. Yeah. So uh, there's a very rich culture on TikTok that I think is different from any other social media platform. And that's its uniqueness. When we look at why TikTok blew up, it was the perfect storm of uh, the social media landscape being so stagnant with all of these platforms for over a decade. Um, and here comes this new kid on the block that's fresh, it's raw, it's unpolished, it's not what the other platforms want to be. And then of course, accompanied with the pandemic, everyone was home, bored, let's try out this new thing. There are, there's such a amazing um, culture for basically everyone. There's all of these unique pocket communities, I like to call it, 
of other of like-minded individuals. So whatever you're interested in, you're going to find your tribe on TikTok. That's part of the addictive nature of the platform as well as their algorithm is so good. It arguably knows you better than you know yourself because it's just tracking all of your user behavior, how long you're watching a video, how you're engaging with that video, how fast you're swiping, what you're doing after watching that video. If you're going to their profile and watching other videos for uh, additional context of that or researching other videos using TikTok as a search engine, which is becoming more popular of an idea now, uh, searching hashtags and, and just how you're using the platform overall. Um, I find I found TikTok to be a very uh, collaborative focused platform as well. They've made um, collaborations really easy. You know, for YouTube for the longest time, you know, collaborations are a great growth hacking strategy um, to, to sort of get people from a like-minded channel over to your channel and vice versa. TikTok has really simple built-in features like duets and stitches and the ability to use sounds from other videos that link back to one another's videos. So they've really in, encouraged that um, that supportive nature of, of um, uh, coopetition, I like to say. So I'm in the business space and uh, I could have the mentality of uh, it's me versus you. I want to take all of the digital marketing clients, but no, we sort of support each other. And I love that about yeah. TikTok. I've met so many incredible people, both in person and just online from, from TikTok, um, local creators, uh, uh, people at uh, uh, marketing events and, and startup events and, and whatnot, conferences. Uh, and it's just been such a, a cool platform. I, I will say that right now, I think they're, they're, there's a little bit of a an issue with community guideline violations, uh, which is a separate topic and conversation. But I think there's just so much content going up and they're relying a little heavily on algorithms and artificial intelligence to monitor that content, especially all of the scrutiny that they're facing now. Uh, as far as privacy concerns from the government and and all of that stuff, so it, it's going to be interesting to see where where it is. But but that's why I love um, uh, TikTok. You know, now, just yeah. to intervene here, I've always been jealous of the collaboration um, easeability of TikTok because being on YouTube for over a decade now. I would have loved to be able to just tag people and to be able to kind of TikTok almost creates kind of like a link chain between videos. And I love that being able to stitch those together and use the audio. And I would love for people to be able to legally use the audio from some of my tutorials and put it, you know, on different things that they do, but obviously, you know, attribute me and, and TikTok's kind of figured that thing out. YouTube normally is slow to market on some of these things we're seeing with shorts and things like that. They're trying to come along and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I, I have been very, uh, uh, excited to see that collaboration on TikTok. But as you just mentioned towards the tail end there, I am very worried and concerned about how they're handling content distribution and the the using copyrighted stuff for, you know, there it's a, it's a very fine line. And I think that once the right person or the right musician or the right film gets ripped or whatever it is, and the person wants to take that to court, I'm just afraid of the repercussions of that and the viability of monetization beyond bringing folks to your business, which is obviously what you're doing right and, and finding ad revenue. And we'll talk about that. So now transition over to YouTube and what you found there. Yeah, I mean, YouTube is is such a more mature, phenomenal platform. I, I found that there, so there's a culture on YouTube as as well, uh, but more so around long form content, right? Um, less so around shorts, uh, which is the newest uh, product and and feature that they've rolled out. Shorts, I think, in general, are so broad right now that the the content that so you can go deeper on tutorials and how tos and educational stuff on short form vertical on TikTok, but it's really not there yet on YouTube Shorts like it is on long form uh, content for for YouTube. And this is coming from testing literally hundreds of uh, of YouTube Shorts repurposing. I probably posted Dusty over six hundred. YouTube shorts before I was like, 
this isn't working. I need to switch this up. Um, and and when I went super broad with it and only started to do top of funnel, that's when it started to to grow. Explain um, explain what that means. Like you talked about, you did six hundred. Yeah. You kind of threw a bunch at the wall. What does that mean, top of funnel? Yeah. So the 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 what the videos that did not work were shorts. Like here's a, a, an SEO backlink strategy you've never heard of before. Mm. And that's really specific for a short that limits an audience that only has a website, only is focusing on SEO, knows what a backlink is in, in the first place and has the time to learn that knowledge and actually apply that or maybe an agency owner. And that's a very limited set of, of people. And so what I found was that really specific uh, topics and titles titles that gave what the video was about away in the title would turn people away from it in general. So if they discover it on the short shelf and they have no idea what SEO even stands for, or they're not interested in that, they're going to immediately swipe. And the, the first second, two seconds is so important on short form vertical video because our attention spans are terrible and there's just infinite amount of content with the flick of a finger. And so I went top of funnel and and for me that's useful websites and literally the titles of the videos would be like top five most useful websites. Well, what are those websites? Who is it for? Do I need these? Do I know about them? What am I missing out on? Right? It causes intrigue. It causes interest. It it it, it expands that bubble and network of who is this content for and causes that intrigue. So that's. That's what I really mean as as far as narrowing down versus top of the funnel on on shorts. And I think shorts will get there as it becomes a more mature platform. But right now, it's just so broad. How do you capture, you know, we talk in the YouTube world about capturing the first five to seven seconds of a long form video. And you just mentioned we're now taking that down to the first second. And you're extremely right, because if you've ever used short form vertical video, whether it be YouTube shorts or TikTok, and I know myself personally and my usage, if you don't get me in that first second or two, I'm done. I'm swiping up, man. I'm gone. And it's funny how we've turned into a swipe culture, everything from dating on Tinder to now TikTok. It's amazing how this has happened. And it's it's actually kind of sad. Uh, but I do understand you got to capitalize on what it is. And this is the market and, and the young folks. This is what they're growing up with. So how are you capturing the first second of people's attention. What are you doing? What are these tricks of the trade that you can kind of share with my audience? Yeah. So realistically, you have about two to three seconds, but uh, saying something that's, that's really polarizing, um, uh, addressing the topic at hand. So unlike a long video on YouTube, there's no time to introduce yourself, introduce your backstory. Uh, you have to get right into it. So I'll start with a, a really powerful opening hook, like these five websites feel illegal to know. And that's a hook that I use over and over again, uh, because it causes so much intrigue. Well, why are they illegal? And of course, they never are illegal, but it's just a powerful hook. And it's almost a little clickbaity, but it's like sort of ethical clickbait because it's it's still useful websites or things like... Um, uh, the, uh, these websites will make you cry because you didn't know about them earlier. Um, three ways to do X, Y, and Z. Um, so they're either going to be interested in that immediately or they're not. And so you have to really be captivating there. Um, and then there's all sorts of micro hooks that you can incorporate and little engagement hacks. Um, do you want to dive deeper into that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about a couple of those. Yeah. So I, I love sneaking in engagement hacks throughout. So I will, a couple of my favorite ones is in video. Like, um, I know this is an audio podcast, but behind me, I have this, this book that says get TikTok famous fast. Um, and people like love to comment on that. Like, what the heck is that book? Did you write that? How do I get TikTok famous fast? Um, kind of an interesting book cover, but, um, I also love to pronounce, uh, words wrong in mm -hmm. my video I because, love uh, I love to, I call this baiting their ego. Uh, but I know human psychology, and I know if I purposely uh, say something wrong, the trolls are going to come out and and correct me. Uh, the grammar Nazis, the the the. <laughs> so I'll I'll say things like uh, there's a website that I I like to to show all the time. It's called AnswerSocrates.com. 
um, the after the philosopher. And so I'll I'll come in and I'll say answersocratus.com and I just will go through it like that. And every single time I do that, uh, people rush to the comments. How dare you mispronounce the legendary philosopher Socrates like that? How dare you? It's pronounced Socrates, not Socrates. How dare you? Um, or I'll say, uh, like one time I showed a website around uh, uh, um, uh, that shows recipes from restaurant tra- chains. And so I pulled up a recipe for Outback's Bloomin' Onion, but I pronounced it Bloomin' Onion, like uh, Onion from uh, from Arrested Development, if anyone yeah. listens like that. Yeah. The people went crazy on that. So Thousands of comments I, saying, I, I oh, have God. to I have to tell you this, Austin, because it's funny hearing you talk about this. I did this accidentally. So I had one of my videos where I was showing some showing people how to how to do something on YouTube. I believe it was like how to get verified on YouTube or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that the video had taken off after like a couple of months being out there and I realized immediately what it was. There was over a hundred comments. I had misspelled YouTube in my captions on the video and instead of uh-huh. YouTube it's YouTube and so I, I forgot the E or something and I put a space in it. Uh-huh. And so it drove people nutty. That video blew up. It ended up helping hundreds and thousands of people because it did blow up. Everything in the video was accurate. But because of, like you said, that little engagement hack, kind of doing a little bit of something a little different, understanding what you're doing to begin with. I didn't, but you're talking about doing that. And then another video, for some reason, I exported my audio in mono instead of stereo. And so the most liked comment with over 2,000 likes was, my left ear really enjoyed this and people just loved it. And the video blew up. And so sometimes doing these little things to kind of get under people's skin, there is a fine line there, right? Of accuracy and trying to be funny and trying to not be too clickbaity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of, of course. And you have to be a little thick skin too, because absolutely no knowingly do this will trigger the trolls. But, you know, just like you said, Dusty, the, if the information in the video is actually genuine and helpful, you're going to reach and help more people. And the, the trolls are just going to help fuel that. So for every, single troll that you get you probably have helped a uh, hundred other people uh just one one other quick one that i that i love to do too so i always on my short content um i show the url of the website that i'm going to share and so sometimes what i'll do is below that url is i'll plant a folder that says uh like in my bookmarks bar that says something controversial like mr beast nud dot 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 and that <laughs> People, and I never mention it, but it's just right there in the middle of the frame. So people, you know, another really important thing for shorts is is that view duration and rewatch rate. So you really want people to not just watch it once, but to come back again. Uh-huh. And so if you just show that for a second there, they're going to be like, what? What did I just see? And they, they watch it again to that point. So it forces the rewatch rate on it. And then they run to the comments. And they're like, did anyone else see Mr. Beast Nud? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so... I think for me, one of the hangups I've had with YouTube Shorts has been how they look aesthetically on a YouTube channel and how YouTube has presented them in the past. I do believe they're working on that. I've talked to folks at YouTube. I know they are. What kind of advice can you give to YouTube, first and foremost, on what you would like to see um, and how they present them, because I, I wish there was a way to kind of categorize them and on your channel separate shorts from long form video. I wish they'd come out and say that shorts do not affect your algorithm ranking for your long form stuff. I wish they'd come and say a lot of things. What would be your biggest wishes with kind of how YouTube is or, or kind of handling shorts and vertical video right now? Yeah, I, I think they're they are working on a lot of these things, right? So like on, on your channel page, uh, it already indexes your shorts into like a playlist, uh, functionality. So, so perhaps more playlist features and the ability to customize that. Um, I'm also thinking like in regards to how TikTok does it, uh, that they have search functionality. So, so maybe shorts, like a, a separate search area for shirts, but but I guess they have that tab already on desktop and mobile to view shorts. Correct. 
And I saw even recently they have a, a short shelf on desktop now, not even mobile. So I think they are doing a, a, a pretty good job. I, I can't think of anything offhand as far as uh, placement. Um, one thing offhand is is um, the ability to view uh, the description of that video yes. when you're in the short shelf is a little confusing. You have to know to click on you the do. three dots in the lower right corner mm -hmm. and then click on description to actually view that. Yep. Um, yep. And I've I've made comments in the videos like, click the link in the description to go to my, you know, lead gen thing or whatever I'm promoting. And they're like, I can't see the description. I'm like, well, you, you can, you just don't know that you can. <laughs> yes. So that's really confusing. And I, I love the announcement that they just announced this week that they're rolling out monetization and mm -hmm. ad rev share yeah. for, for shorts creators. And now there's some criteria there. I, uh, I think I heard that you have to have 10 million shorts views in the last 90 days to hit that criteria. Um, and it's a 45% revenue share yeah, as 45. opposed to 55%. But I think that covers music license it does. Uh, as as well. So that's a huge thing for, uh, for me that I'm really excited about. Because Dusty, to be honest with you, this is kind of crazy. My entire channel just blew up. It, it, it really just is a, unintentionally a shorts channel. And uh, I've got to be one of the only people in the world that can say they got their YouTube play button before their channel was even monetized. That is just so weird. Yeah, it is. It's it's very unique. I want to talk about monetization. Um, how does monetization work on on TikTok? So there's a couple ways that you can monetize. They have the um, the uh, the creator program, which pays you an ad revenue share mm -hmm. um, based on the percentage of views. But it's garbage, garbage. Uh, to be honest. I'm not even in it. Uh, I've noticed anecdotal evidence across multiple accounts that when you enter it, it um, uh, reduces your views drastically. And they'll fight you on that to no end and say, no, there's no correlation. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not caused by that. Uh, but I just sort of disagree. <laughs> I've noticed over and over again. And, and so it's so garbage that um, like when I was in it and I've jumped in and out of it several times, but reaching 10 million people per month, I'd maybe make $200 per month. And the suppression of views uh, is not worth um, $200 uh, to me uh, because I'm my primary goal for monetization is through alternative methods. Clientele. So clientele and digital downloads and affiliate marketing and so, brand so, deals and all this, all this good yes, stuff. Let, let's speak about that for a minute. How are you making money? Like what, what are, what are your, what are you, what kind of eggs are in your basket? I always tell people to diversify, uh, spread it around a little bit. Talk about how you're making money from your vertical content. Yeah. So I try to diversify in a lot of different ways. So we have uh, the, the primary focus right now is, is client acquisition. So we're a full service digital marketing agency. We help businesses with, uh, their TikTok strategy, TikTok management, video editing, but then we also have a whole uh, search engine optimization team as well. Um, so just gaining clients is is the primary focus. But uh, I also monetize through brand deals. So I do three or four brand deals uh, per month with various companies promoting uh, their products and services. I also have quite a few digital downloads and assets. So online courses, uh, uh, paid eBooks. Uh, I also do affiliate marketing. So because of the useful websites that I share, uh, I drive them into um, uh, an opt-in page to get a list of all of the useful websites that I share. And that list happens to be affiliate links that I sign up for. So I just drive people there, capture email. Um, they get put into a, a, a drip email sequence um, and that sells hourly consulting, uh, which is another monetization avenue. I also do um, uh, UGC content sometimes. So if they just want somebody that knows how to create short form vertical video, but they don't necessarily want to advertise on my platforms, uh, I've done that before. Also, I've promoted um, websites uh, in the past that have done well uh, just from me organically finding them. And then the company reaches out and says, hey, uh, can we buy the rights of this video for you? Uh, and so that's been, uh, that's, that's worked before. Um, client referrals too. So if I can't take uh, a client, but I am affiliated with another business that can, 
uh, and I refer them to them, they typically will give me a commission uh, mm-hmm. if that prospective client lands there too. But it, it's so important to uh, diversify your your income streams because if one gets cut off, then, yep. then you're screwed. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Um, kind of in the last few minutes here before we close out, I want to talk about how you can take your YouTube stuff and repurpose it on TikTok. Um, yeah. what, what are... What are your thoughts on that? Someone is on YouTube. They're intrigued about getting into short form content. Maybe they've dabbled into YouTube shorts. Maybe they haven't. Uh, what would be some of your recommendations and go-tos for that that individual? Yeah, so you can definitely repurpose some of your YouTube content. Um, I would. Uh, it's got to be vertical. You don't want to uh, clip it as a as a horizontal clip, and then you have the because what happens is um, it displays as as vertical content on TikTok. But if you just upload that in its native horizontal uh, format, it's going to have a giant black space above it and below it. And it just doesn't look as good. So I would, you know, clip out uh, really 45 second or less, ideally 30 second or less segments from your videos, punch in on them. So it's, it's, it's you, it's just the body. There's no other stuff on either side of you. Um, And YouTube allows you to do that now. I believe from yeah. the, from the back end that it's something a new feature that may not be rolled out to everyone, but there's a way to allow people to even create short form stuff from your content now as well, just for people that don't know that. Yeah, I haven't done that, but that's a that's a great uh, thing to test and and something that they could they should consider rolling out uh, as well. Um, as far as you know, editing and and whatnot, you want to make it you want to have a really good uh, intro point and exit point. Uh, because again, that opening hook is so important to capture their attention. So, you know, starting that clip with a, a very, you know, saying, a, addressing a question, a topic, saying something polarizing, um, working in quick cuts throughout the content too. So even if your video is is not like this horizontally and after you punch in, you know, punch in a little bit more, like throw, uh, make sure you have like hard-coded subtitles on, which you can use CapCut to do this or uh, throwing emojis on the screen or incorporating B-roll. You really should have some sort of cut every two to three seconds, something flashing on the screen, something that uh, that re-triggers the dopamine re- receptor so that viewers don't get bored. I-, I love that. You have had so much value to share with us today. I appreciate it. Maybe we can have you back on you know, in a year's time and talk about kind of the updates of, of what's going on in short form content. Many people who've done YouTube for a long time, who are YouTube uh, lifers or you know the, the old the old heads, whatever you want to call them, they're afraid of vertical content. Uh, I'll put myself in that category as well. I will say this: I wasn't sold on it to begin with. I am definitely sold on it now. I think there are definitely some kinks to iron out, whether it be monetization, whether it be how it's shared, whether it be how it's displayed on YouTube. But it's here to stay, uh, and it is the the way of the future. Uh, I, I don't believe long form content is going anywhere. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I think podcasts have never been more popular. Uh, long form type stuff has never been more popular. People are consuming just as much content. Uh, you know, they're just kind of diversifying where they're spending that time, whether it be short, long form podcast, whatever it may be. Right. So with that being said, do you have any closing words for us before we hop off? No, I, I think they're, you're exactly right. There's always going to be, um, uh, an audience and a need for long form content. Um, but you need to embrace short form vertical video content. Um, it's a natural progression, uh, of, of content. I don't want to go too long down a rabbit hole here, but it's, it's, it's a consolidation of flipping that phone sideways to view vertical or to view horizontal content. We're on our phones all day. It's, it's a natural positioning for our wrist and for our hands to consume vertical content. That's why it's gone that way, in in my opinion. We're seeing vertical content not just adopted across every social media platform, but in our lives. Pay attention to uh, television, uh, watching ESPN. You're going to see highlights uh, in vertical format because these these videos are being picked up by news channels. Um, vertical video is everywhere. It's just an additional outlet. And you can leverage short form vertical video to drastically grow all of your long form content as well. Could not agree more. Uh, Austin, thank you so much. Uh, Let folks know where they can get in touch with you. Yeah, thank you, Dusty. So you can follow me any platform you want at Socialty Pro. 
uh, across the board. And uh, I would recommend checking out my uh, podcast, Business Talk. That's Business T-O-K, if you'd like to learn how other business owners are leveraging TikTok to grow their business. Could not agree more. Austin, thanks again, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the YouTube Creators Podcast. We want to thank you and invite you to subscribe to the show, as well as support us on Patreon for great perks, such as having your YouTube channel featured on the show and a link on our website. Until next time, keep uploading those videos.